Welcome back to Lesson 10 of the Microtech CHR and Advanced Networking course on Emmanuel Coyos Creatives. In this lesson, we're diving into PPP profiles, secrets, and interfaces, which are essential components for managing PPPoE, VPN, and dialing connections in Microtech Router OS. So why should you care about PPP? Because if you're setting up a PPPoE server, VPN clients, or remote access, these tools will be your best friends for managing users, authentication, and security. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand PPP profiles, what they are, and how to configure them properly. You'll be able to set up PPP secrets, managing user authentication for secure connections. You'll be able to configure PPP interfaces, that's managing active interfaces once connected. So let's jump in and get started. What are PPP profiles, secrets, and interfaces? When working with PPPoE, VPNs, be it PPTP, L2TP, or SSTP, and all dialing connections, Microtik uses PPP profiles, secrets, and interfaces to manage and control these connections efficiently. Let's break it down, starting with PPP profiles. Think of PPP profiles as templates that help configure multiple PPP users without manually setting each one. Instead of applying the same settings over and over, you create a profile that automatically assigns important settings such as IP address and location, which defines how clients receive their IPs, authentication settings, which determines the security method for login, traffic and rate limits, which controls bandwidth and enforces speed limits, DNS settings, which assigns DNS servers for clients. Using PPP profiles, makes managing multiple users easy and consistent. Moving on to PPP secrets. A PPP secret is simply a username and password stored in Microtik for authenticating users. Whenever someone connects using PPoE, PPTP, L2TP, or SSTP, their credentials must match an entry in PPP secrets to gain access. This is used for dialing users, VPN clients, and PPPoE customers. It can be linked to specific PPP profiles for automatic configuration and it helps to manage and control individual user access. Then as for PPP interfaces, these are active PPP connections. Whenever a user successfully connects using a PPP secret, Microtik creates a PPP interface to represent that connection. Each active connection appears as an interface, and it supports PPPoE, L2TP, PPTP, and SSTP. It can be monitored, controlled, or disconnected from the interface list. So in simple terms, PVP profiles define the settings templates for users. PVP secrets store user credentials for authentication. And PVP interfaces show active connections in real time. Now that we understand the basics, let's jump into creating and managing PVP profiles. We'll go through both the Winbox GUI method and the CLI method, so you can choose whichever works best for you. For the GUI method using Winbox, you open Winbox and log into your Microtik router. You navigate to PPP Profiles. This is where all your PPP profiles are managed. You click Add Plus to create a new profile. Configure the following settings. Name, you can call it VPN Profile or whatever suits your network. Local address, we say 192.168.2.1. This will be the gateway for connected clients, usually the first IP address in the range. A gateway is the exit point of a network that routes traffic between different subnets or to the internet. Any device in a subnet needs a default gateway to communicate beyond its own network. The local address in a PPP profile is the IP assigned to the router itself within the PPP connection. It's a common convention in networking to assign dot one as the first usable IP in a subnet for the gateway. The remote address pool we select VPN pool, which we created earlier. This defines where clients' IPs will come from. We're not using IPv6 for now, so we skip those. We leave everything else as is. Then go to DNS servers, add new value. I'll say 8.8.8.8. .8 add another, 8.8.4.4. These are Google's public DNS for client resolution, which I prefer to use. Then we go to the protocols tab. Here we can control which protocols features are enabled or disabled for PPP sessions. These settings affect performance, security, and compatibility for PPPoE, VPN, and other PPP-based connections. Now, let's break each option down in simple terms so you know when to use them. 
The first is use IPv6. This option enables or disables IPv6 for PPP clients. If enabled, PPP clients can receive IPv6 addresses if your router is set up for IPv6. If disabled, only IPv4 will be used for PPP clients. So leave this enabled if your network supports IPv6 and you want clients to use it, or if you are running a dual stack network that's both IPv4 and IPv6 together. Turn it off if your ISP or network doesn't support IPv6, or if you only want to use IPv4 for your PPP users. Next is use MPLS. The Modi protocol label switching. MPLS improves how traffic flows across a network by using labels instead of IP routing. It can reduce latency and improve performance, especially in larger networks. Enable this if you already use MPLS in your network. If you use layer 2 VPNs or need MPLS-based QoS. Keep it turned off if your network doesn't use MPLS, which most small networks don't. And if you are running a basic PPOE or VPN setup, without advanced routing needs. Next is use compression. This setting compresses data before sending it over a PPP connection. It helps reduce bandwidth usage, but increases CPU load. Enable this if you have a slow internet connection and need to save bandwidth, or if your traffic consists of text-based data, which compresses well. Disable it if you have a fast internet connection, as compression would help much, or if you are transferring already compressed files, like videos, encrypted traffic. Finally we have user encryption. This encrypts data to make sure it's safe from hackers and eavesdroppers. This is required for VPN protocols like PPTP, L2TP, and SSTP. Keep it active if you need secure communications, such as for VPN users. If your network handles sensitive data that needs protection, which most networks do these days. Keep it disabled if the connection is within a trusted internal network with no security concerns. And if you need maximum performance, an encryption overhead isn't necessary. Next, we have the Limits tab. The Limits tab in PPP Profile is where you control how long users stay connected, how much bandwidth they use, and whether they can have multiple logins at once. This is useful for bandwidth management, controlling session durations, and preventing unauthorized multiple logins. Now, let's go through each setting in simple terms so you can configure them properly. Session timeout. This defines how long a user can stay connected before they are automatically disconnected. Once the time is up, the user must reconnect to continue using the service. Use this if you want to limit connection time. For example, you want to allow users to connect for one hour per session, maybe for a free VPN session. Keep this turned off if users should be able to stay connected indefinitely without forced disconnections. Next is idle timeout. If this is turned on, if a user is idle for the specified time, and by idle we mean not sending or receiving data, they get disconnected automatically. It helps free up IP addresses and system resources when users forget to disconnect and they have no activity going on. Use this if you want to disconnect inactive users after a certain period, for example, after 30 minutes of no activity. If you're managing a shared network with limited resources, this becomes handy. Leave it disabled if you don't mind users staying connected even when idle. Let's understand this a bit more. The format is HHMMSS, so hour, minute, second. So if you say 00, 05, 00, it would mean five minutes of inactivity. That's zero hours, five minutes, zero seconds. In this case, if a user is inactive for five minutes, they get disconnected. Now, if we say 010000, it would mean one hour of inactivity. That's one hour. Zero minutes, zero seconds. If a user is inactive for one hour, in this case, they get disconnected. By now, you may already guess 000000 would mean no timeout. That's always stay connected. Next is rate limit. The rate limit, ROX TX settings, controls how fast a user can download as ROX and upload as TX over a PPP connection. Think of it like a speed limit for internet usage. It ensures no single user takes up too much bandwidth, keeping things fair for everyone. The values are known as RX TX, with RX representing download speed and TX for upload speed. So if we say 10M slash 5M, it would mean that we want the users associated with this profile to have a download speed of 10 megabits per second and an upload speed of 5 megabits per second. We can also use a symmetric rate limit like 10M slash 10M. This ensures that users get equal download and upload speeds, which is great for applications that require both sending and receiving data at the same rate, like video conferencing, 
VIP, cloud backups, and more. Note also that when setting the rate limit, RXTX, in MicroTik PVP profiles, you don't have to write full bit rate numbers like 10 million slash 5 million. That's 10 million bytes per second or 5 million bytes for 10 Mbps and 5 Mbps respectively. Instead, you can use K for kilobits, M for megabits, and G for gigabits for simplicity, depending on the rates you want to set for this profile. Use this if you're an ISP or network admin who needs to ensure fair bandwidth distribution. Leave it disabled if you don't need to limit speeds and want users to use as much bandwidth as available. The last option on the limit tab is only one. The only one setting in PPP profiles controls whether a user can have only one active session at a time or multiple simultaneous logins. If enabled, the user can only connect from one device at a time. If they try to log in from a second device, the first connection will be disconnected automatically. This is useful for ISPs and businesses that want to prevent account sharing. If disabled, the same user can log in from multiple devices at the same time. So again, use this if you're an ISP and want to prevent multiple people from sharing the same login, or you want better security by limiting users to one session. Disable this if you allow users to log in from multiple devices, phones or laptops simultaneously, or you use redundant connections or load balancing that requires multiple logins. We also have the Queues tab and the Scripts tab. We're going to have a future lesson dedicated to each one of these. In the meantime, just know that they provide additional ways to manage bandwidth allocation and automate tasks for PVP users. Queues are useful in setting per user bandwidth limits. That's an alternative to rate limit in limits tab, which controls the entire PPP profile. It can be used in prioritizing specific traffic types, for example, VOIP, gaming, or video streaming, and to generally ensure fair bandwidth distribution across multiple users. The script tab allows us to execute custom router OS script when a user connects or disconnects. This can be used for automation, notifications, login, or security policies. For instance, you want to log connection details, say user X connected at Y time. You want to send alerts with your email or telegram when a user connects or disconnects, or you want to dynamically adjust firewall rules based on PPP session status. The list goes on and on of what can be achieved here, and we'll soon dive into those with real-world examples of traffic shaping and automation in PPP environments. Now you can click on Apply, then OK, and our newly created PPP profile is ready for use. So we go to Secrets. The Secrets section under PPP is where you create and manage user accounts for PPP-based connections, such as PPPoE, PPTP, L2TP, and SSTP. Each PPP secret defines the user's authentication details, IP assignments, bandwidth limits, and other settings. So we click the plus icon to add a secret, and here we're allowed to set the parameters for the secret. Here we can specify the username that the client will use to authenticate. Let's say VPN user one. Next is password. We can define the password required for authentication. I'll set a password of my choice. This password is stored unencrypted in Rata OS. So for security reasons, always use strong passwords. Next, we have service. This defines which PPP service this user is allowed to connect to. We have async, PPTP, L2TP, PPPoE, SSTP, OVPN, and any. By the way, the async option in PPP secrets is used to define a serial or RS-232 interface for users connecting via PPP over asynchronous or dial-up connections. This is rarely used in modern network, but is still present in router OS for legacy and niche applications. So depending on what PPP connection you want this user to have access to, you can select accordingly. If you want this user to be able to access any and all PPP services available on this router, you can set it to any. Next, we have caller ID. This option restricts a user to a specific MAC address or phone number as used in dial-up systems. This prevents unauthorized devices from logging in with stolen credentials. So if you want this account to be usable only from a specific device and you have the MAC address of that device, you can enter it here to force authentication from only that device. Next is profile. This assigns a PVP profile to this user. A PPP profile defines IP settings, authentication rules, timeouts, bandwidth limits, and more. So we can go ahead and select the PPP profile we created earlier. 
Next is local address and remote address. The local address is the IP address assigned to the router for this PVP session, while the remote address is the IP address assigned to the user when they connect. Since we already selected a PVP profile for this user, we do not need to configure this anymore. It is useful when you want to specify an additional parameter different from what the PVP profile should already handle automatically. Let's say you want to assign this user a static IP, you can type it in here. Next is routes. This allows you to assign custom routes to the user when they connect. Use it if you want specific users to access only certain networks. For instance, if a VPN user should only access the 192.168.50.0/24 subnet, you can specify a static route for them. Same applies for IPv6 if enabled in your environment. And finally, we have limit bytes in and limit bytes out. These options allow you to restrict the total amount of data a user can upload or download before their session is terminated. Limit bytes in sets a maximum amount of incoming traffic as downloaded data a user can consume. Once the user reaches this limit, their connection is dropped. For example, if you set limit bytes in to 1 GB, the user can only download up to 1 gigabit before this connection. Limits byte out defines the maximum amount of outgoing traffic as uploaded data a user can send. When the user uploads beyond this limit, the session is terminated. Note that these limits apply per session. So if the user disconnects and reconnects, the counter resets. If you want to track usage over time, say a monthly cumulative limit, you should consider using Radar OS User Manager or external monitoring tools like a radio server, which we will discuss in detail in a future video. So we say apply, and now this secret has been added and is valid for authentication. If we establish a connection using this user account, it should appear on the interface list in PPP. In the next video, we'll focus on understanding DHCP, VPOE, and VPN. Thank you for watching.